Hi everyone, it's Matt from Cambridge Longbows here again today. I thought I'd make a video about how to make horn knocks. Now, we tend to use buffalo horn, the stuff that I get comes from the highlands. Um, you can buy it in all sorts of shapes and chunks and lumps. Uh, what I did originally is I bought a, a massive bulk order of ready shaped ones. So they, they come ready shaped like this. They're really quite large and bulbous and they come pre-drilled. But the good thing about them is, is you can stick them on, because they've got the tape already done in there, you stick them on, glue them, and then once they're glued on you can shape them how you want them. So this is a, a war bow that I'm refurbishing that's going to go on eBay soon, hopefully this weekend if I get it done. Um, so the knocks on this, this bow is about two years old, and I haven't really shot it because it's 110 pounds draw weight because it's a bit too much for me. So I've probably only shot about 100 arrows through it. But you can see the difference. That's This is my old style of knock. So the ones I'm making now are quite different. They're much more streamlined. But if you look at the two together, there's quite a big difference in the sort of bulbousness of them. Ideally with the tips of the bow, whether it's a horn knock or a self knock, you want to get the mass down as much as you can. Because it, it will increase the speed at which the limbs will come forwards because there's less inertia for them to get over. And also there'll be much less hand shock. If you've got I mean, great big knocks at the end, as the second it snaps forwards, it's going to drag your hand forwards and give you a lot of hand shock. So, <clears throat> I start off with that. Um, I have worked with bigger lumps of horn before and had some fun with them. This is one I did a long time ago. I don't know if you can see this, I made a tiki head. It's, it's kind of silly. You'd never have that on a bow because it's just too big and too heavy. But for a bit of fun, it was, it was quite good fun. I'm like one day, I don't know, I'll use it probably on a bow, a novelty bow of some sort. Um, so, once you've got the horn glued on, and you've, you've drilled the hole into it, there are different ways of doing it. Um, I don't know if I have... okay. People use one of these, I don't know what it's called, it's a wood drill, and they just cut down so you get the even taper. So if you've got a piece of horn which hasn't got the hole drilled in it, you can cannibalize one of these to turn it into a drill which will give you the tapered hole for the tapered fit. When I'm working on the bow, <clears throat> what I do to get the round aspect on it is I bring it over onto my belt sander and I very carefully on the side disc, I hold it and I twist it at the angle that I want and I just gradually turn it until it's got the taper that I require to fit into the knock. You just keep trying it and, until it fits snugly. Then I use a load of araldite, get loads in there, put it down. You have to keep pulling it down because it squidges out for a while and eventually you end up with an incredibly solid structure. Shaping the knock, again, I tend to use the, the belt sander again now, especially with the disc sander on the side of it. Um, but you can use bastard files and all sorts. You just you treat it exactly the same way as you would treat wood. Now, once you've got the shape roughly as you want it, what I do then is I use, to smooth it off, I use 80 grit sandpaper. So this is one I'm working on at the moment, which isn't particularly great, it's a bit too big. But 80 grit sandpaper, then I go down to 120, I then go down to 320, and from that point I then bring it over onto a buffing wheel, which I'll do to show you in a minute. Um, to get into the grooves, the stringing grooves, we use a piece of paracord which you just run the polishing compound in and then you work it like a saw into the grooves and that polishes in there. Oh, pardon me, okay, I'll bring it over and you can see what I do for the polishing. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, so for the polishing wheel, I, am, I don't know what the compounds are because my friend and, and um, Boya compadre, Derek Hutchison, gave them to me. The reason I'm doing this video is because he helped me so much with the horn knocks when I saw him quite a few years ago. So you get your buffing wheel, you stick it on a, on a grinding wheel, you just bung it on, you use a compound, and you carefully, it gets quite hot when you're doing this, you turn it on. Oh, wrong switch. Go. and come in sideways. What I do is I just run it. So if you have a look at this before I start, it's fairly smooth but you can still see all the marks in it. And you just carefully run it through. 
different sides. And I just again, I just work it around. Always work underneath, because if you work with it on top, at some point it will catch it, bang it down into the table and snap the lock. So don't do that. And just gradually run it round. And then from there I come onto the sides. You can hear it and into the knocks. The back of the knock, at the top. <clears throat> okay, you get some residue from the polishing compound, but can you see the difference now in that? That's quite a lot different. It's a matte shine on that now. What I'll do is I'll change the buffing wheel to a different one with a high polishing compound and this will literally come up polished like glass. It'll be beautiful. So, just turn that off. So, hopefully that helps. I'm just wondering if I've got any pictures of an Oxford I make at the moment, but I haven't because they've all been sold. Um, but yeah, this bow, I've got two bows going on eBay this weekend. One of them is a, a, a really nice small 60 pound, six foot, at 28 inches, uh, sorry, six foot, 60 pound at 28 inches uh, uh, long bow, full compass. It's a nice, it is a very, very nice one. Um, and I've got this thing, which is a, a reconstitu reconstituted, no, refurbished war bow that I made for myself quite a long time ago. It's, um, but, Again, it needs a string and I need to re tiller it, make sure it hasn't changed in the time that it's been sitting in the back room. So, yeah, hope that helps. Horn knocks, when I first started doing them, they were a huge problem. I really struggled with them. And thanks to Derek, who was also known as Del the Cat, um, I managed to sort out the problems with them. And now I find them one of the easiest parts of doing the bow. So, hope this helps. Bye.